One political writer said he didn't know whether to thank Wisconsin or blame Wisconsin for the results Tuesday and the implications for the Republican Party. There's no doubt that Wisconsin shaped the national narrative about the race for president, but with the candidates moving east, is that already a distant memory? We're joined now by Kyle Condit, managing editor of Sabato's Crystal Ball at the University of Virginia Center for Politics. Kyle Condit, thanks very much for being with us. And let's begin by talking about the impact of Wisconsin on this race. A lot of talk about that. But my question for you is, is it perhaps a bit overstated on what this meant for the GOP contest? I think it certainly could be. I think there's been this rush by a lot of folks to say that because Ted Cruz won Wisconsin and won the lion's share of delegates from Wisconsin, that we're sort of guaranteed to have a contested convention, that Donald Trump has no path to 1,237 delegates, which is the majority you need to get the nomination. Um, you know, I think there's been a lot a tendency to write off Trump uh, throughout this process. I, I know I've certainly been guilty of it uh, months ago. Uh, and, and, you know, I do think that Trump's path to a delegate majority is narrower than it was before Wisconsin, uh, but, but Trump's candidacy is not dead yet, uh, not by a long shot. Uh, New York, his home state, votes on April 19th. It seems likely that Trump will get uh, a lot of the delegates from New York, uh, which could basically cancel out Cruz's gains in Wisconsin. Uh, and then there's a number of other northeastern states that vote on April 26th, a week after New York, uh, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Connecticut, uh, some other states. Trump might actually do pretty well in those states, too. So. Uh, you know, if anything, Wisconsin might indicate that, that, uh, that Trump will have trouble in some of the remaining kind of heartland states. Indiana on May 3rd is a good example. But I do think Trump still has a path to a majority, uh, it, despite what happened in Wisconsin. John Kasich uh, said in New York the other day uh, about what happened in Wisconsin, and we should say John Kasich did not do well here, but he sort of minimized the performance of Ted Cruz, saying that he did not think those uh, votes for Ted Cruz were necessarily Cruz votes, but they were uh, to, stop, to stop Donald Trump. Uh, do you do agree with that assessment? Is there any uh, validity to what he was saying there? I do think there were probably a fair number of people in Wisconsin who voted for Cruz because they did not like Trump as opposed to really liking Cruz. But I think Kasich's issue is that, well, why didn't some of those voters vote for him? Uh, and can he become the uh, you know preferred anti-Trump candidate in some of these states coming up? I mean, you know, Kasich could potentially finish ahead of Cruz in places like New York and, and Pennsylvania. But you know, Kasich has really done very poorly in almost in, in, in most states. Uh, and I think that, you know, the Cruz folks are saying that, that Kasich is just a spoiler right now. I think Kasich needs to perform a little bit better in, or, in order to prove, uh, prove Cruz wrong. Let's talk for a moment, Kyle, about uh, uh, coattails in this election. And that, that's sort of the great unknown here. What uh, uh, the, the selection, for example, of the GOP candidate could mean for candidates further down the ballot. How big a deal could coattails be in this year's uh, fall campaign? I think the coattails could be very important. We're in an era of where there's not quite as much split ticket voting as there used to be even in the, the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Uh, and you know, you would ex most of the competitive Senate races, including in Wisconsin, uh, are happening in states that are also probably going to be competitive in the presidential race. And so if you see one party you know, sweep the competitive, uh, uh, the sweep the swing states, kind of like what Obama did in, in 2012, you could also see the, you know, the Democrats potentially uh, winning, uh, you know, most of the important Senate races and getting a Senate majority. And uh, certainly uh, Wisconsin is a state that, that is right near the top of the list for Democrats in terms of important seats to win the Senate back. Give, give me your sense of the Senate race here. Uh, uh, the crystal ball is has uh, moved the, uh, the Wisconsin Senate race uh, from Republican, which is Ron Johnson currently holds a seat, obviously, to the Democrat, which would be Russ Feingold in this case. Why do you see it that way at this moment? Yeah, so for many months, we've had the Wisconsin Senate race as our rating is leans Democratic, which means that we see Feingold as a, as a small favorite, not an overwhelming favorite. But uh, and I think that a lot of the polling has sort of borne that out, even though some of the polls have gotten a little closer lately. Feingold still consistently leads Johnson, who's the incumbent. And you know, if you're an incumbent and you're losing in the polls consistently, uh, and you know, the best you can do is kind of the mid 40s when you need you know 50 percent basically to win. Uh, I think that's a that's a bad sign for an incumbent. Uh, certainly, Johnson you know beat Feingold uh, by about four or five points in 2010, but. You know, 2010 was a was a great year to be a Republican. It's not clear that 2016 is going to be a great year to be a Republican. 
So I think Johnson is going to need some help at the top of the ticket. Uh, I don't know if he would necessarily get it in Wisconsin from uh, Donald Trump or Ted Cruz being the presidential nominee. So yeah, we see uh, we see it as competitive, but we definitely see Feingold as, as a favorite at this point in the race. Kyle Conduct with Sabato's Crystal Ball. He joins us from Washington. Thanks for your time today. We appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Coming up next, we talked to him earlier why Congressman Sean Duffy doesn't have an opponent. That's when Upfront continues.